In today's video, I want to talk about my well-trusted camera, the Sony Alpha 7 III and how to make the footage look cinematic, fast and easy. In this video, I'll show you my resolution and frame rate settings, which picture profile I'm using and how to use it, how I set up my custom buttons to have the perfect settings in the run and gun environment and which equipment I'm using to give the footage a more cinematic touch. Shooting videos with an 8-bit camera and a limited dynamic range has its challenges. You will have to take a lot more care when taking the footage, as you won't have a lot of freedom fixing over or underexposed clips. I've been using the Sony Alpha 7 III now for about one and a half years and I tried a lot of different settings. Some while ago I left 120fps and Cine 4 behind me and finally found my holy grail of settings, which worked perfect for me. So let's jump right into the menu of the Sony Alpha 7 III and let's find out. I try to film as much as possible in 4K, as it gives me a lot more freedom during post-production. Unfortunately, with the Sony Alpha 7 III, we're limited to 30 frames per second. So if you want to film 60 frames per second and higher, you will have to reduce your resolution down to Full HD. For now, my go-to setting is 4K 30fps, with a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second on a 24 frames per second timeline. Now, let me tell you why. First, I can still decide in post if I want to reduce the footage to 80% slow-mo or increase the speed again to 100%. Second, with 80% slow-mo, your video looks still quite natural and with a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second, you will get enough motion blur for your filmic look. Third, slowing down your clip to 80% can smooth out your handheld footage. It will look a lot less shaky, which for me is the biggest advantage. It's not a real slow motion, it's rather a little dreamy, but still realistic. Actually, I only use 60 frames per second to emphasize special moments. Although, of course, slow motion always looks kind of cool and epic, the viewer might feel disconnected to what he sees in your video. A whole video in slow motion feels unnatural and you're losing the effect of slow motion in moments where you can really use it to make a moment feel more special. 120 frames per second I'm only using when I'm filming very fast moving objects and people. Filming a person during a natural movement with 120 frames per second feels way too slow for me. Of course, you can increase the speed again in post, but you lose image quality and almost have no natural motion blur. I will show you later in the video how I set up my custom buttons to have a quick access to the above mentioned settings. Alright, let's get to my second point, the picture profile. And when it comes to the picture profile, I've got to be honest, I'm not a very technical person and Sony picture profiles are still a mystery for me. Seriously, I've watched almost every video about it there is and I'm still not sure what's happening inside my camera. So for now, I can only tell you what works best for me. After testing different profiles, the winner for me is the HLG3 picture profile. And here's why. Number one, it's a flat picture profile, which gives you a higher dynamic range and more flexibility in post. Number two, it's easy to expose as long as you keep your exposure meter at around plus one and set your zebras at 99 plus, you should get usable footage. I know, it won't work in every situation, so try to avoid shooting during times where it's very bright outside. I always prefer to shoot in the morning or late afternoon or during cloudy days, that will be okay as well. Third good reason, it shows enough contrast so you can still see what's happening on your small camera screen which is actually not very bright on this Sony Alpha. And the fourth good reason, it's easy to edit in post. I will show you in my next video how to do it very fast and easy. When it comes to the settings of HLG3, I kept almost everything in standard. I only changed the details to minus 7 as the camera sharpening looks way too digital. It's a better solution to do a little bit of sharpening in post. Alright, let's get to the third part. Custom button settings. In a run and gun shooting environment, it's very important to have your favorite settings always ready and easy to dial in, otherwise you might miss your shot. Especially as the menu of the Sony Alpha 7 III is a... Well, it's a nightmare. So let me show you how I customize my buttons. You can save your most important settings via the two memory positions on your mode dial. Now turn your mode dial on position number one. Now you can set up your camera. As mentioned above, I use 4K 30 frames per second, picture profile 5, which corresponds to HLG3, and uh, just don't forget to reduce the detail settings. Next, set your aperture to f2.8 or your largest aperture. 
shutter speed at W frame rate. In my case, it's 1 16th of a second. And next, set your white balance. I often use the cloudy preset as it gives the footage a warm color, depending on what kind of look you want. And also set your ISO at the lowest possible setting. Now save all the settings in your menu right here. Next, dial in position 2. Now we set up the slow-mo settings. You can keep most of the settings as mentioned before. Switch to Full HD and 60 frames per second or 120 FPS if that's your preference. And uh, change the shutter speed to 120th of a second or 240th of a second for 120 frames per second. Now go back into your menu and save the settings. Alright, that's already it. For me the perfect basic settings to start with. Available with just one switch of my mode dial. Of course, those settings won't work in every situation, so you will need some more custom settings to make quick changes. Most important, I changed the turn wheel to the ISO setting. As you have a fixed shutter speed and most of the time you also want to have the highest aperture, the ISO setting is the only way to correct your exposure. Having it on the wheel gives you very quick access. My C1 button changes the white balance. Always try to keep the white balance consistent for one sequence and don't rely on the auto white balance. Fluctuating white balance will be very difficult to fix in post. My C2 button changes the focus field. For wide and medium shots I often use the field focus field and for close up shots I use the flexible spot to have more control of the focus point. With my C3 button I can switch to APC mode which gives a 1.5 times crop. It is super helpful when you're using prime lenses and need to zoom in a little bit. With my C4 button I'm switching the touch sensitive screen on and off. When switching it on I can change the focus point with my fingertip. Number 4. Let's talk about equipment. To give my footage a more cinematic touch there are a few tools I'm almost using for every shot which won't break the bank but can have a huge impact on your shots. You'll find the links to the products down in my description. First of all, there's this free will variable ND filter. As with a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second, most of your shots would be overexposed. So when you want to keep your aperture, the only chance to expose the image correctly is to use a ND filter. For a few months now, I've been using the variable ND filters from free will with a built-in mist filter. The build quality is very good and the uh, filter doesn't change the colors too much. You're super flexible with the variable stops and you even have this mechanical feel when you come to one stop. It's uh, really nice. But the best of all is the built-in mist filter, which makes the footage a lot smoother and not so digital. Especially when you're taking shots with backlight. I really love the dreamy look and character the filter adds to the footage. I mean, look at this, I could watch that for hours. The second tool I'm using all the time is some sort of stabilization. Often I'm only using this small rig top handle. It's uh, very fast to set up and already has a huge impact to get smoother footage. When I'm using longer lenses, I tend to use my Ronin SC gimbal. It's affordable and does its job. Unfortunately, it doesn't carry my 24 to 70 mm Sigma lens, but walking with my 85 mm on the gimbal gives me butter smooth footage. The third tool I'm always using is the Sennheiser MKE 200 microphone. As you know, 50% of the viewer's experience of your video should be sound. So using sound effects is super important to make your footage come more alive and cinematic. Before I tended to use all sound effects from Envato Elements and deleted all original sounds from the camera. But it saves you so much more time if you can use the original sounds and it also makes it more authentic. I'm still using the extensive library from Envato Elements, but I try to do as much as possible with my Sennheiser MKE 200. As you can see, the microphone is very compact. The sound quality is super impressive and you can even do voiceovers with that microphone. I actually did the voiceover of my Grease video with the Sennheiser MKE 200 and I was really surprised by it. But besides all other doubts, my wife and I took a flight to Greece by the end of March, hoping for less crowds in the off season. What we experienced was quite the opposite to what we expected. Last but not least, I want to mention my Sony 85mm f1.8 lens. 
The image quality for the price tag of 450 euros is simply amazing. The compressed look with this beautiful bouquet looks perfectly cinematic. If I could own only one lens, then this lens would be the one. Alright, I guess that's a wrap. My settings and tools to make my Sony Alpha 7 III footage look more cinematic. I hope I could help you to make your Alpha 7 more efficient and even a little bit more cinematic. In the next video, I will show you my workflow of editing my footage. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do me the favor and click the button below. So far, have a good one and I'll see you soon.